My name is Alyssa. I am a consultant with LSAT Unplugged. I have been in the course for about eight months now, uh, which is really exciting. And through that time, I've seen it transform and my own experience within it has transformed. I'm also a TA. And in the room, we have Gabby, Jocelyn, Ayaka, Shakira, Sachita, and everyone just do your thing as you, as you need to. So I'm excited. I'm excited about who's in the room tonight because uh, I think there's a lot of potential here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, one thing I want to point out is that Ayaka and I have become obsessed with essays. And something that I've been trying to figure out is uh, it's a hard problem in terms of how does one take their own essay and move it forward. Um, it seems like kind of a hard thing to do. It's, it's kind of like when you have these thoughts in your mind and you're trying to tell your story, uh, how do you know if it's clear or not? Like, I think that in a really simple way, every single person on the earth has a story where they're like in the passenger seat of a car and like somebody is driving and they're like, turn right there and the person's like where and you're like there and they, they like don't know they're like turn right there and you're like I meant there like my finger is pointing right there everyone's had that everyone has had that experience like recently it just happened to me I said this this wall and and my mom was saying that wall and I was like why would you think that wall if I'm saying this wall so <laughs> shout out to my mom uh but what the point I'm trying to make is how on earth do we create a personal essay state like statement that is how on earth do we create a personal statement essay that it makes sense to us in our mind, but that we're also capable of editing ourselves. Full disclaimer, I would never recommend that anybody front end to back end only has their own eyes on an essay. Um, no matter who it is, I do highly recommend that there is always at least another person who can give you feedback on your essay. Law school is very expensive, uh, not only money-wise, but time-wise. Um, so with that being said, you, if anybody is interested in applying to law school and you're interested in investing tons of time and tons of potentially money, maybe you get a great scholarship, which is awesome, but definitely a lot of time, definitely a lot of hard work. If you are investing any of that, Absolutely, it's worth it to have somebody else, um, a pair of eyes on that. So um, with that being said, I would love to jump in in terms of how does one take control of their own editing experience? What do I do after I wrote the first draft? Funny story, um, I had a friend whose college roommate was a practicing lawyer. She went to a T14 school. She was practicing law in the field that I think is very interesting. She had also a very similar economic background to me. And he said, hey, my college roommate um, ended up going to law school. We're really close. Do you want me to set up an interview with you? And I said, yes. I was so excited. We got along really well. We spoke in the interview and she said to me, hey, yeah, let me know if you need anything. And I just blurted out, would you take a look at my personal statement? And she said, like a lawyer, yeah, I can't promise I can get you into law school. I mean, I can, I can look at it. And I want to share with everyone the mistake that I made because I wrote my first draft and I sent it to her. And I cringe as <laughs> I'm saying this out loud right now. And please let my embarrassing moment be a lesson to everyone. I just didn't know. I was like, this is fire. I mean, this is great. Like, this is totally good. And I thought that maybe she'd be able to lend a helping hand. Don't do what I did. I am here to try to help everyone out and just talk about editing circles. So this is how to, or one way to take control. Uh, let's see, I jumped in the fire, just like Dean Andy said from Georgetown. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share, and I'm also going to make the font pretty big so that as you're screen sharing, anybody can see this on, on, on here. So I want to talk about your editing checklist. What happens after you make your first draft? 
and you're thinking about sending it out or you need to make the next move. All right. One thing you could do is email Ayaka and I. We help people with drafts. You can email us at admissions at lsatunplugged.com. If you're in the course, you can reach out to us um, any which way on the community platform as well. I know I was just checking that today. So we're definitely available. All right. So you want to create uh, a chain of people, which I didn't find out till later. So I hope this helps someone. So you want to have an editing chain. So it might start with myself. I might have peers in that chain. I might have close ones, like close family members that maybe are professionals. Um, for example, I have a friend uh, that is an, an actual, an editor in New York City. She's a, a, an actual, okay, participants can ask a manifestation. So I have a good friend who's an editor in New York. She would be like a close family member that's also like in a professional field. Maybe you have family members that are professors. So, and then lastly would be the professional, would be the last part of that chain. So this is gonna go through a series of, of uh, different people and different chains so that you can actually build who sees what, when, and you can actually create a much more efficient uh, way of, of editing. So don't do what I did. So you would go through yourself and I hope that I'm gonna give everyone some plans tonight on questions to ask yourself to get your draft stronger before it ever sees another set of eyes. Every single time you can make your draft stronger, every time that a draft is stronger, the next set of, of eyes and, and intention behind it, the next people that see it will be able to offer better feedback. I can almost guarantee it because the feedback will be more pointed. The feedback will be more specific. So um, yourself, then peers, if you're in the LSAT Unplugged course, I would consider that peers, maybe even close family members in a professional field. If you don't have close family members in a professional field, it can be friends, anybody. Maybe it is someone um, like your old college roommate that is in editing or someone that you've known along the way that's in a great field. And then the last one would be the professional. For example, that's probably when I should have sent in my draft. So um, this practicing lawyer who said, yeah, sure, I'll take a look at your personal statement. Can't guarantee anything. I could have sent it to her way later in the stage than I did. I just got excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the chat. Oh, great, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and get us started with questions that you can ask yourself. Apologize about that. Questions to ask yourself before um, moving on. All right, so what's the story? It sounds really obvious, but if you read your own essay and you can't clearly say what it's about in one to two sentences, you have too much going on. Um, so something that's really typical is in the first draft, there's a, there, I see most of the time, there are actually three to four essays in one draft. Um, I've mentioned this before, but most of the time, somebody who wants to go to law school, there's probably a lot of different reasons why you want to go to law school. And there's probably a lot about yourself that you could say that you feel like adds value. Um, so I'd just say, what's the story? And you want to be able to restate it in one to two sentences. Uh, personal statements usually only two or three pages long. You can't get a lot done in that amount of time. Um, it, it's it's possible to bring in some some ideas, but you you most likely can't. Another story would be uh, oh sorry, what's going on? 
in the story. I know it sounds repetitive, but again, if you're asking yourself these questions and you feel the need to bring in so much information in order to explain yourself, you still are not clear enough. Uh, a good example of that would be my original statement spoke about being Hispanic. It spoke about being an artist. It spoke about um, like financial like issues with the law against artists and how I started becoming a part of that. There's just way too much going on. Even right now, I can't even explain to you my first draft um, all in one to two sentences. Jocelyn asks a great question of what's the difference between what's the story and what's going on in the story. Uh, the best way I can put it is in terms of what's, what's the story, I'm gonna go ahead and use Ayaka's uh, draft as an example because she's brought it to these classes before. Um, but if I were to say about Ayaka's draft, what's the story? She is working in cybersecurity and there's a breach and she ends up in these meetings where they ask her as a translator about legal issues. And that's when she's unable to answer the questions because she is working as a translator and she knows all the ins and outs of cybersecurity but her knowledge stops at the legal jargon, you could say, or the legal like ramifications or consequences and also like projecting into the future what the next steps for the company is. To me, that's, that's the story. She gave me a thumbs up. What's going on in the story, that's what I mean about it's really hard to get really clear when you're asking yourself these questions. What's going on in the story is that Ayaka actually started to attend multiple conferences and started traveling. I think that she went to 10. I said 10 and she put her hands up. Ayaka ends up because she cannot continue on with the legal knowledge she then tells us this is what's going on in her story. She tells us that she starts to travel. She starts to learn as much as she can about it. And she, this is when she realizes after traveling to 10 different conferences, which is a lot, she, she feels that wall. And that's when she decides she needs a JD. Um, so for me, that's the difference between what's the story and what's going on in the story. And if it sounds repetitive, it will feel repetitive, but if you can articulate that within your essay, uh, I know Shakira is in the room and please feel free to um, like jump in. But I remember just the first few sentences of the last draft that we were talking on, talking about you had mentioned being a teacher and there was a change that happened within your school's program and you had to make a change. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, to me, that's the story. There is a change, you're a teacher, there's a change, you're talking about how you navigated that change, then what's going on in the story, that would be the nitty gritty of how you navigated that change. So what's going on in the story, there should be, you know, one, a few examples of how you did something or in the story. Um, so the reason that I'm, that I'm, so strongly landing this point of what's going on in the story versus what's the story is the going on part. This is very important because you need to show uh, your attributes instead of tell. So for me, instead of saying, I'm an extremely hard worker, I'm very detail oriented, I'm very creative, I end up telling a story of how I became injured as a college athlete. And I used the time off in my injury to learn about somatics. And somatics is the way that the body moves through space. So I started like learning about like physics and gravity and like how to like let your arms swing in, in terms of like letting it work with momentum. So that tells a story of how I'm resilient and creative without me saying I'm resilient and creative. So that's why the what's going on part is, is so important. Uh, oh, and Shakira affirmed me that that is what happens and, and the evidence. But 
these are questions that you should be asking yourself in terms of moving your essay forward and making sure that your essay is clear. Um, it does need to be very clear. And so if you can answer these questions, you're on the right track. I'm gonna go ahead and move on. And this is gonna be nitty gritty. Um, I would say that talking about structure, um, so I've kind of been talking about topic thus far. So what's the point of each paragraph? I'm getting almost reading comprehension in here. Sorry to be such a nerd about it. But what's the point of each paragraph? I've come across um, a few essays where a paragraph, maybe things try to jump around where they're trying to be effective or make a stylistic choice, uh, but it doesn't end up happening. Or have you ever heard someone tell a story about themselves? Something that happened at the market and it seems a little bit out of order. And you're like, why didn't you say that part first? Yeah, everyone's had that moment uh, where something doesn't quite make sense. So if you ask yourself, what's the point of each paragraph? It might be to showcase resilience or it might be to show how i'm interested in the program it can be as simple as that um it you know these are examples of how you could answer this but something i really want to point out when you are trying to take a look at your own essay to ask yourself if it's clear is sometimes what's the point of each paragraph it'll say to um to show how hard something was. And if the next paragraph is to show how hard something was, you don't need one of those paragraphs. This is another gap that are kind of hole that I've seen people fall into is if you start answering the same reason for what's the point of each paragraph or to show how I overcame something, you can take something out. That's a really easy way to see what's important and what's uh, and what's doesn't need to be said. So like diving even deeper, what's the point of each paragraph? What's the point of this sentence? This is something that is kind of difficult to ask yourself, but I really encourage anyone who maybe is trying to elevate their essay, which I hope everyone is, there should be a point to every single sentence. Uh, and to follow up with that, can I say this point in less, in less words? This is something that I ask myself all the time. Uh, I'm willing to bet that everyone in the Zoom room and everyone listening, there's been a time where maybe you introduce an idea in a sentence and then you build on it with the next sentence. And then after that sentence, you are still talking about that same point. I understand why that would be happening because as a good writer, you want to create an introduction and then actually address it and then say what you want to just said. And a really great essay does do that. But I believe that there can be times where we're spinning too many sentences on one idea. Every single sentence, it's a really short, it's a really short essay. It's two pages long, uh, roughly. So you want to ask yourself, what's the point of this sentence? If that point has already been made, just experiment and see what happens if you take out that sentence or you combine them. So again, these are questions that you could be asking yourself. Um, now getting into, I want to give us some like barrier. So topic, um, structure, ways to identify your own holes. Topic, structure, now style. Something that Ayaka has brought up before, and I love that she does this, and actually in my interview tonight with the director of admissions, Jonathan Glick of University of Maryland of Cary Law School, he mentioned, make sure the first two lines, make sure the first part of your essay is compelling. Um, he confirmed that he sees roughly a thousand applications per cycle, which if you think about how many days are in a year, that is many applications per day. So something that everyone can ask yourself is, 
are the first few lines compelling? Sometimes I try to write something compelling, but instead of being compelling, it's just sort of draggy. I'm trying to paint a picture, but the picture is coming to the reader too slowly. Uh, so is it genuinely compelling or are you trying to be compelling? I know it's kind of hard, hard to tell. Ayaka has her hand raised. I'm going to go ahead and say, what's up Ayaka? I, sorry, I kind of jumped the gun. Um, can, and I know you kind of mentioned it right now, but can you kind of go a little bit deeper into the difference between a compelling opening and this hook that everyone is very concerned with in starting their, their essay? I'm trying to figure out how to answer this. In terms of the hook and in terms of compelling, I think it's most important to be honest. Sometimes I've seen essays where the hook is extreme or a little bit like the person is trying to make a point and so they exaggerate. I would say uh, the first few lines of your essay as well as just having a conversation with anyone. Um, it can be very compelling and very engaging to speak with anyone without exaggerating. So, sometimes there's a little bit of an exaggeration there, which can be off-putting um, because it just seems inauthentic. Uh, so are, are the first few lines compelling, but to also mention this hook, um, and, and Ayaka and your question, and you can speak more on this and I invite you to, I would say um, is the hook take too long or is it balanced with the rest of the story? Sometimes we try to paint a dramatic picture and compel the reader so much that we spend the first page trying to compel them. And we've ended up painting more of a picture of a sunset that dreadful day. Um, instead of talking about ourselves. You know, you and I have had a lot of conversation around, you know, what is compelling, what is too much. And really when it's too much, it's really off-putting. So we don't want to go there. And, and I think you put it beautiful. I apologize everyone for this barking dog. Do, and I think some of you bring me to my next point of do the first few sentences make sense with the rest of the story? And that's something that I've come across too in terms of what's the story. If, if I were to say the story is I, I you know, was learning how to play soccer. Um, it, it wouldn't really make sense for the hook to be about like something that happened to me in kindergarten that was like a traumatic event. Um, and then I'm talking about how I learned how to play soccer sometimes. Um, which, brings, which brings me to the point also that your personal statement doesn't have to be about something intense. It can be, and that can showcase character and a good strong like moral character but it doesn't have to. So something I would ask, um, I know I, I wrote a diversity statement that talked about the intersectionality of being queer and Hispanic and the, the compassion that those experiences have afforded me. And I wrote a hook about telling my mom and coming out to my mom as gay on an airplane. And I thought it was interesting at the time but later on in my essay, I had written about, since I, I'm so open and queer in a Hispanic family, I'd written about the fact that it had afforded me the position in my family of being the one that is easy to tell like their secrets to, or maybe to come to for advice or um, like someone that was like a source of relief for members of my family. And Ayaka actually pointed out to me that like, 
those stories were actually much more interesting than coming out like on an airplane. And, and that's what I really am trying to talk about when, when I, this aspect right here. So it's through my own experiences that I've developed these questions that I could have asked myself and pushed myself into a, into a better place in terms of my own essays. Because if I had said, asked myself, do the first few sentences make sense with the rest of the story? Does it really matter? Like, is it really impactful that it came out on an airplane or is it really much more impactful um, talking about my role within family and my role as a partner and how I navigate difficult conversations, um, like as a queer woman, like that's all a lot more interesting. Ayaka brings up a really fantastic point that coming out story is absolutely interesting, um, which also brings me to the point of, I come across a lot of people who just wanna write their essay and they wanna write it fast, uh, but, Solomon, a TA and Elsa Unplugged, had an interview uh, recently. I don't want to mislabel the school. I think it's with the University of Brooklyn Law. It, it's definitely Brooklyn Law. I'm getting a lot of nodded heads. And this, uh, the admissions officer brings up an absolutely lovely point of that when she was applying for law school, she wrote four essays that she felt like she could talk about something. Uh, and she circulated those four essays within her edit chain. She, not her words, those are mine. And she asked everyone, which one's the best one? She actually mentioned that she wish she would have changed that question, which is a question that I want to bring up um, in terms of when you move on to the peers and close family members is she wishes she had said something to the idea of what does this say about me or which one sounds most like me. So this is something that I really wanna land in terms of close um, peers versus, you know, like someone outside your circle, because there might be someone that you know that's a practicing lawyer that is a friend of a friend who you might say, can you take a look at this? They don't know you. So that's when you could guide them. Um, Ayaka and I have been thinking about essays so much that we've come across a few people that they say that they give their essays to a practicing lawyer, someone in law school, a family friend, a cousin, um, anyone that they thought would be a good set of eyes. And a problem that we've seen is that those people hand back their essays and they go, yeah, it's really good. It's really hard to get someone that you don't interact with regularly or rigorously in an academic setting to really go there with you. So um, suggestion would be with close peers, you could say, does this sound like me? Does this seem like me? Again, really close questions. The first one is just straight up voice. Do I talk like that? Uh, you know, if, if someone says, you don't, you don't really speak like that. I don't really hear you using that really big, strange word with a lot of syllables, you know. Is this what I sound like? And this is this what I seem like? Does this, and you can also ask this to friends, but what does this say about me? Something that I come across in, in people or they say, do I seem like egotistical or do I seem like I'm assuming something? And if you ask someone, if that's a really hard question to ask because someone might say like, not really, I don't get it. But if you say, what does this say about me? I remember meeting with, um, so Chita has a beautiful personal statement. She's in the room tonight. And I remember reading a personal statement and I had known her like for a while, we'd been studying together for a while. And uh, when I read her personal statement, I was like, holy cow, this girl is smart. This girl is tough. And her personal statement showcases an example in her life where she did something hard that I, I just felt like that's not something that every person can do. And, and she explains what she does. So if she were to say, what does this say about me? I'm like, definitely shows that you take initiative. 
definitely shows that you can be detail oriented and make decisions for your life that can impact yourself in a positive way. Definitely shows that you're smart and that you're very active and you, you play an active role in your life and designing your life's experience. To me, those are positive qualities. So she could say, what does this say about me? And um, I didn't grow up with Sochita, so I can't say, does this sound like her? So you can see where when you have different parts of your edit circles, you can leverage those people in a way that's so much more effective than canning them your essay and saying, is it good? Um, also, like a lot of people, if they're not applying to law school, they don't know if it's good. Like they can't, they can't like point out like what it would need, but you can ask them questions like this and it might help. Someone outside your circle, you could say, what did you learn about me? Do you feel like you got to know me? Uh, Shakira, I thought of you. I Tonight, I was talking with Jonathan Glick of University of Maryland Carey School of Law, and we spoke a lot about the balance of talking about clinics that a school has to offer and about one own, one's own story. And I remember you and I having a really fantastic conversation about that. And I asked him, what is the balance there? And Jonathan Glick, he, he actually brought up some really fantastic points that the more someone talks about the school's programs, the less we get to know about you. And I'm not saying Shakira, that's what you're doing because you're awesome. And, but I just thought that brought up a really interesting point. So if you had your essay and you talked about clinics, it, it could absolutely work. But a way to know if it's working is if you hand your essay over to someone and you say, do you feel like you got to know me or what did you learn about me? If that person says, I learned that you definitely read the website, that's good. But what would be even better if they're like, it seems like you're really passionate about environmental law and you are someone that is XYZ, XYZ. If they can answer those questions, you've done a really great job. I hope this is sort of helping people like figure out the balance between like clinics. It's like, these are really great questions to ask people in order to figure out if your essay is landing. Um, I have some hands raised. So Chita has said in the chat, when you have other people look at your essay from her own experience, it also showed her that what she wrote seemed more like her versus someone edited her entire personal statement. Um, and you have your hand raised. Go ahead, Sochita. Oh, yeah, you said exactly just that. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it, that's also like another way for you to um, if, like after you write it, you ask yourself whether this sound like you or not or whether. I don't know, in any case, maybe um, going over the board or under the board, right? And I think when you have people looking at it, because from my experience, when people edited my personal statement, um, and it was like, for example, if I was talking about cat and like a purple pen, you know, I'm focusing more on the purple pen and they focusing on more the cat, right? And that's just like not, not what I would want to write or um, like just the writing style is not like me. Um, and so I think that's really helpful um, in terms of like, if you really want to know, does that really sound like you? That's such a fantastic point, Sochita. And you bring up a great point of how much editing is too much editing. Like when is other people's voices overtaking my own ideas? And I hope that this sort of checklist is actually going to help steer that instead of saying, is this good or not good? Because somebody might say, like they might have their own personal opinion, but if you can ask them these questions, it actually keeps yourself in the driver's seat. If you can say, it, it, you know, does the hook take too long? Does it get to the story pretty quickly enough? They, it, that's for, it's like a yes or a no. That's really clear. And they're not digging their hands into your story and trying to change it. Then you are still in the driver's seat and you can make decisions for yourself on how to go back and fix that. Or you can fix it for yourself if you're asking yourself these questions. Um, if you ask someone, do you feel like you got to know me? Another one that I, I, I would love everyone's opinion on this, but you know, would you want to have lunch with me? 
Yeah, it's like a really, you know, kind of, it might be awkward. It depends on who you're asking this, but the, the best personal statement essays are my favorite ones um, between people that I've never met before. I would say, make me feel like that. I'm like, wow, that person seems really unique or that person seems really interesting or like they have a lot to say about a certain aspect. And I definitely want to have lunch with this person and pick their brain. Um, if you're, if, if somebody's like, if you, I know I went over topic selection and, and things to avoid, but if you spent your entire, you know, thing, essay going over a resume or regurgitating all the things you've accomplished, but didn't really talk about it. I, I think that, that most people are on the same page that when you're in a room with someone and they just list off all of their accomplishments, you are like, nah, I don't really want to go out to lunch with you. It's a really great way to see if you're in the right, if you're headed in the right direction. Shakira left a comment and says uh, she, if she's talking about clinics and she's done a lot of research in the school or the community, and she's really interested in that school and she wants to convey that she's intentionally applying to this school. It's not just another one on her list. And she wants to talk about, she could bring into the perspective what she can bring as a candidate maybe to those programs or to those clinics, I think is what she's saying. She could talk about, talk about personality, skills, passion, interest into the program. Beautiful point, Shakira. And you actually almost verbatim ask or are bringing up exactly what I asked Jonathan Glick of University of Maryland Carey School of Law. I asked him, I said, if somebody does want to talk a lot about the clinics, would it be kind of like ego, like too much of an ego for them to say, like, I think I could bring this. And he actually mentioned that all full-time students specifically at his school are, it's a mandatory thing to do a clinic. So if you're imagining yourself in that clinic, that's, that's not really a, too big of an ego because you're definitely going to be in a clinic. So it's completely okay to imagine yourself in that clinic or what you might bring to it or might you want to be excited about. I think that's what you're saying. Ayaka has um, her hand raised. Yeah, I mean, great points. I, I kind of wanted to circle back to this, like, would you want to have lunch with me question? And I think it's actually a brilliant question to ask in that, um, you know, especially if your essay is touching on some really hard topics, because you want to have a, a certain level of levity on those super dense, hard topics that might be really not traumatic, but you know, of, of traumatic events and all of that. So even through that, if your if your essay is going in that direction, even through that, if somebody's like, I still want to have lunch with this person, I think that's great. Um, it also helps you to kind of imagine, right, of the admissions officer of you don't know this person, you don't know their race, you don't know their age, you don't know their gender even. So and you're not guaranteed to have any one person as your admissions person that's looking through your essay. So you don't want your essay to get generic to the point of like, it doesn't say anything about you, but you want to appeal to 98% of admissions officers out there. Um, so, so that's something to consider. Um, so I actually really love this question to ask your close peers or someone in your inner circle or outside your circle. Definitely. I, I love it. Like asking your, you could ask your close peers or your outside circle this. Um, I think even your close peers, it, it's definitely something that could still fit in there. You know, maybe they know you and they talk to you all the time, but I know I've read people's essays in this room that I was like fangirling over you and just like, whoa, this person's so cool. I can't get, believe I get to talk to them. And Again, admissions officers are imagining you in the classroom. So it's something I'm gonna ask. Jocelyn, I see your hands raised. Oh, Jocelyn, are you here? Yeah, uh, um, actually, I'll just try to keep it to two things. Uh, but back to this kind of question of which you wanna have lunch with me, I think, Can you hear me? I can hear you. You're cutting in and out just a bit.
visually you're, you're frozen as well. Let me see if I can. Okay, me now. I can hear you now. Let's see if this one works this time around. Oh, I think we just lost Jocelyn. All right. Well, I'm actually really excited to hear what Jocelyn will have to say. Um, I'm gonna go a few more questions um, to ask oneself. So this whole first page is questions to ask yourself. Uh, this is also fantastic because if you do ever work with an editor or if you have someone else's eyes on it, if they ask you each of these questions, it's gonna be a really, productive process if you can answer them. So it's a great thing to have. Um, Jocelyn, you're back and you look like you're ready to roll. So go ahead. Yeah, um, sorry about that. Um, what I was going to say is, I think someone put it in the chat about coffee um, before I was frozen. But yes, kind of going back to one of the first, the first that I or first thing that I presented on was like having a virtual coffee, right? So I guess in that sense, yes, those are the things that you um that's like the exact same question that you should be asking yourself because you know an interview is almost like for like once you know they have send you an interest letter and they want to have an interview with you before you know determining whether to accept you that's essentially a virtual coffee but without the coffee right so that is I think absolutely brilliant um and then the second thing is I'm actually looking at how these questions and how things have been compartmentalized um I kind of thought about how would I like create like a um I don't know if I would call it like a worksheet but something maybe to go with um with my essay um to present to someone to get a feedback and evaluate so that I can actually see like exactly, because something I've noticed just with having other people that don't know me, like edit my work, they'll go in and they'll make comments and different things. And because I don't really know them, I don't necessarily, and it's not a bad thing. It's me having to kind of understand their thought process and why they're wanting to change something or why they're wanting to restate something, right? So that's, I think part of, the, or the beauty of having someone outside your circle versus inside your circle that you know that's editing or giving you feedback. But I think it's important to kind of quantify and be able to compare, right? And I think that having like a, an, a document uh, where people can, folks can go through and circle or rate or, you know, use, utilizing these questions, I think would be absolutely phenomenal. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Jocelyn, I, my cheeks hurt. I'm smiling so big because you are landing on exactly what I was hoping to talk about tonight in terms of productively engaging in who you hand your essay to. I, I and you are bringing up uh, the exact sort of like plot hole I've seen in terms of like somebody has given me their essay and they say, and I've never met them before. And they say, let me know what you think. And there will be like five different stories within the essay. And I can actually see a trail because it's a Google doc. I can actually see a trail of everybody's comments that have seen that essay before me. And they are pulling the essay in different directions and by the time it gets to me, the essay has been pulled in every person's opinion before it got to me. And that's it. You are bringing up exactly why I wanted to talk about these guided questions tonight, because it keeps yourself in the driver's seat. And it also keeps everybody else who's maybe not going through the exact law school application process you're going through, it puts them into asking them questions in a way that you can go back to the drawing board. So you are bringing up the most brilliant point. I hope that people take this document and they take these questions. This first page definitely is questions you could ask yourself, but you could absolutely create a format for any of this. You could say, you could ask someone, what's the point of each paragraph? 
I'm never going to give, uh, I'm most likely never going to give my mom my essay for feedback because she'll probably say it's great because she's my mom. Uh, but that's not a question my mom, somebody like my mom like would want to answer. Like, what's the point of each paragraph? She's like, seriously, like, you know, so maybe you pick and choose who you ask what, um, but you could straight up ask someone what's going on here. And if they write back to you and they can say, this is what's going on here. You are on the right track. You want someone to be able to reiterate to you what's going on instead of telling you, this is what's most interesting to me. You might also say, what's the most, you know, interesting part? And that's more of like an opinion grab, not so much like an edit grab. That might just be, you know, to figure out like, maybe if everybody says the same part is interesting and you're trying to shave parts off of your essay to make it more concise, maybe that could be a pointer to figure out, okay, that part isn't really landing. Um, Jocelyn, go for it. I see your hand raised. And to your point about, I guess, like when you're mentioning about your mom and how you would probably not have her edit, understandable. Um, but what I was also thinking too is the importance of making sure that you tailor that um, form that you want people to give you, you know, feedback on that you tailor that form for those. So you have like a form for those that are like super um, detail oriented and, super, and that are like, you know, going to take apart the mechanics of the situation, the structure, you know, make sure, you know, the commas, if you put too many commas or whatever, like you want to have um, a, a feedback or a form for feedback for those specific, those individuals, and you want to have it differently, um, structure differently um, than, you know, others. And so for me, like, this is actually going back to one conversation I had with one of my mentors where she talked about, like, you said, you talked about this chain, right? In my head, I'm thinking about a committee. Since I deal with a lot of academia type stuff, I'm thinking about, okay, I'm building a war uh, <laughs> um, I'm building, a, you know, a strategic team, I'm building a, a committee, and I'm assigning each person that I'm having a part of this chain, right, with, um, I, I want them to handle specific um, areas, have yeah. specific tasks, so I think that that's, like, super important, and hopefully, and, you know, it helps people, but yeah. That's what I was like. I really like this idea of like tailoring. I think that it could be, I, I also don't even feel like there's not an exact science to do this successfully. And that's what excites me about, about these ideas that we're talking about is that if you ask someone what's the story and that's all you ask them, I think that that could be really beneficial. And so there doesn't have to be an exact science. There doesn't have to be a perfect way to combine any of these questions. But if you lead with a question, it's going to put you in a much more productive place than, um, than them sort of just getting their hands all in there. So Chita has written in the chat, if you break up each paragraph and send it to someone, and they can get your point across just from that paragraph, then I think that's great. And you've covered your point in each of the paragraphs. That is a heck of cool suggestion uh, and saying what's going on in this paragraph. You could just say, so like, what's going on here? I also hope that like we are sort of addressing how to ask yourself questions that you could ask yourself before handing it off and you could still make some some moves and also questions that you straight up pretty much I don't want to say I can't but would be really hard to ask yourself uh like do I feel like I got to know me 
because you're going to say, yeah, that's like, that's me. I, I'm, that all makes sense to me. I'm me that you can't ask yourself kind of harder questions like that. So um, there should be a committee as Jocelyn, as Jocelyn so eloquently put it. Um, the only other thing I, I would say um, that you could ask yourself is, uh, and this one, well, I don't think this one's, um, yes, okay. It, are there any subjects I brought up that would or could, and this is a question you could ask other people too, any subjects I brought up that would, could pose a question from the reader that I answer that those questions. For example, if you say, when I was in, uh, when I was young, I got in trouble with the law. That, that would, a follow-up question would be, what, what are we talking? What happened? Um, so did I bring up any subjects? Are there any subjects I brought up? Um, and that's also something you could ask other people too. You could absolutely say, um, you know, do you have questions after reading this? That's kind of a hard question to ask, you know, because they're going to be like, no, I don't have any questions. Um, so this is a really poorly written one. Um, were there any moments in the essay that were confusing? That's a really great way to put it. I've, I've read someone's essay before and I'm like, were you, is that when you were in Canada or is that when, and they're like, have to explain it to me. That's a perfect opportunity for you to clean up a part of your essay. I just made that up. I never talked about that, be, anyone being in Canada. Uh, I hope that this and, and combined with Jocelyn's feedback uh, helps like figure out what to do and, and sort of like this editing chain and your editing checklist. And I am constantly in the works of figuring out how to create those worksheets that Jocelyn has, has spoken about. But as we've sort of proven tonight, there's not an exact science uh, because I don't, I don't exactly know when everybody thinks of their own committee, it's going to be different. It's going to be really different um, in terms of everyone's own life experience. So I'm still working on a perfect, perfect like worksheet that could be shared around maybe in the course. Um, and, and maybe we could even like trade with each other. I, like we could all, Jocelyn's so awesome. I, I, she, uh, let me know if we want to collaborate on that. I think that that would be really cool. Like anybody that's in LSAT Unplugged, we can be like, hey, let's go through each other's essays with this checklist, like asking each other these questions. I think that that would be so awesome. And I think that it covers a lot of that ground of how to move an essay forward, but how to still be in control and authentic of your own essay. So that's all I have for tonight. Uh, if anybody else wants to share, Anna uh, has posted the link in the chat. You can reach me or Ayaka at admissions at lsatunplugged.com. Um, we are both uh, also acting as TAs. We do interviews with deans and directors and admissions officers. We are still really heavily invested in the LSAT. So reach out if you need anything. To everyone in this Zoom room, I am personally giving a shout out that I have so much respect for everyone here. And I'm really happy I've gotten to know all of you throughout the LSAT Unplugged course. And I'm really grateful. And I can't wait to keep working with everyone. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.